Do you think you sweat more than the average person? You're not alone. You could have a medical condition known as hyperhidrosis, and it affects about 5% of the population. This, it happens to be the first ever Hyperhidrosis Awareness Month. Dr. Adam Friedman and Lisa J. Pioretti are here to tell us more. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Dr. Friedman, let's start with you. Maybe take this, let's break this down to the basic foundation. Why do people sweat? Sure, so sweating is a natural process. It's our kind of natural air conditioning. It's how we regulate our temperature. However, with hyperhidrosis, which is excessive sweating, this is four to five times more than you actually need. It has nothing to do with temperature. You'll be sweating if it's cold or hot, anxious, stressed, hormonal changes. It's persistent sweating regardless. And therefore, it's a medical problem. And the good news is we have medical solutions for it. Yeah, what's the deal here? Why do people develop hyperhidrosis? And I guess what, what can you do about it? What, 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 how do you know if you have it, I guess? Yeah, no, those are great questions. So first, there are two different types of hyperhidrosis. The first is primary, which is the genetic form, meaning it's passed down from generation to generation. And we can see it even in kids. Why it happens, we're not 100% sure, but what is happening is the nerves are sending too many signals to the sweat glands, and so they keep on generating sweat. Now, the secondary form, that's associated with underlying medical issues such as diabetes, hyperthyroidism, even certain medications like high blood pressure medications and antidepressants. In that setting, there's a clear correlation, but with the primary form, it's not 100% clear why it's happening. Mm -hmm. The good news is we have ways to manage both of them. These range from over-the-counter and prescription antiperspirants, various devices, uh, Botox injections, and even oral medications. Yeah, there's a number of things that can be done. Lisa, I want to move the conversation over to you. What is the, I guess, what do you think is the most understood part of hyperhidrosis that the general public really should know? That many, many people are affected by hyperhidrosis. That, in fact, millions and 365 million people around the globe have hyperhidrosis. And most of them are suffering in silence because they think they're the only ones who have it. They are also suffering in silence because of the stigma associated when someone is sweating profusely. That's such a negative stigma that the, then the sufferer becomes ashamed. Fact is, hyperhidrosis is excessive sweating that is not controllable. It's not even predictable. And it's so profuse. I mean, you just, you'll sweat through three layers of clothing. You'll sweat so much on your hands that you can't hold your steering wheel. So it is absolutely a medical condition and it absolutely deserves respect and treatments that are effective and safe. Yeah, and that's why this month was created, Hyperhidrosis Awareness, Awareness Month, and it was created in November, why? So we wanted to have it in November because it is not a hot month. And, and right away, right out of the gate, we are dispelling a myth about that sweating, profuse sweating only happens when you're hot. Well, no, it happens when you're cold too, if you have hyperhidrosis. It can happen in your ski boots. When you're skiing, you can have your boots filled up with sweat and therefore your feet are really cold. Mm. So yes, and we have it in November to d right out of the gate, like I said, dispel the myth that hyperhidrosis is affiliated with a temperature. Yeah, doctor, you mentioned a number of treatment options. Uh, I know that we have, there's, we were just scratching the surface on this topic here, but where can reviewers go for more information? So sweathelp.org, which is the official website for the International Hyperhidrosis Society, is a phenomenal resource. From personal experience, I share with all my patients, they come back, they are so thankful, not just for all the information, the descriptions of the various treatments, but they also realize that they're not alone. This is extremely common. And so knowing that others are suffering, hearing from them you know, through the blog, that itself can be somewhat therapeutic equally to some of the treatments that we have. Yeah, well, thanks for both of you sharing your time this morning and shedding some light on this topic. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for having us. You, you betcha. Kayla, over to you.